Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another new entry here. This one yet again based on one of your new suggestions. This one having to do with something that I thought I had covered before when I was reading some of the information on it, but I checked my playlist and nope, it's definitely brand new. By the way, a quick reminder to everyone out there, I saw some of your other suggestions as well. Some of those I have already covered, so if you have a chance, check out the search function there on my channel, type in your suggestion. There there's a good chance that I may already have done it before in the past and you'll be able to see it and enjoy that video there. But back to this one here. This one has to do with a weird mishmash of sorts. Once again, an amalgamation of several creatures all at once. There's not too much info to share, but it definitely still stands out both visually and also with regards to its aggressive nature. In fact, you're looking at a representation of it now. It has a very unique name as well. It's known as the Onka Boy. So let's go ahead and let's talk about that here, and then I'll give my own thoughts and opinions on it. And I'd love to hear what those of you on the local side, especially in Brazil, let me know what your thoughts are too. So what is this Onka Boy? Well, it is a creature that is found in Brazil. Brazil definitely seems to have a bunch of them, right? I mean, here in America, there's just a very few set of notable cryptids, um, few and far between, but definitely in Brazil, it has far more. You have to go there to the Amazon in particular, the very vast jungles, and that's where you'll find this creature here. Hopefully, though, you don't find it first before, I'm sorry, hopefully you find it first before it finds you, because this is something that is very, very dangerous. First, let's talk about the physical characteristics. I mentioned earlier it was a mishmash of things, and I'm not joking. Essentially, take your average jaguar and then mix it up with bovine, a cattle, a cow, in other words. And when you do that, that's essentially what you have here. You have something that has the feline characteristics <clears throat> of a jaguar, and then you have something else that has hooves, if you can believe it, hooves that actually are and instead of paws, like these are its feet, its actual hooves. And then on top of that, it leaves these round foot strips within its path every time it makes one of those single steps. And then it has the spots associated with a jaguar. And then on top of its head is probably the most prominent thing, a very large set of horns. But apparently only the males have these horns, if I'm not mistaken. There could be a chance that the females do as well. But otherwise, that's the main distinction. Again, take a mixture of a jaguar with some cattle, and that's what you have here. Not much else that stands out in terms of size or anything else, but its characteristics, at least when it comes to its hunting nature, definitely makes it very very dangerous. I mentioned a minute ago about it being aggressive. It is absolutely very aggressive to the point of being deadly. So here's what I mean. This is a creature that is always on the hunt. And unfortunately, for us at least, it always hunts in pairs. More on that here in a minute on how important that is. But it's always on the hunt to try to find food, we happen to be part of its prey as well. And primarily, it seems like they hunt at night. So if you're doing something else in the daytime, you could be fine. But otherwise, if you're at night, then watch out. And they pretty much hunt fishermen. They hunt bushmen. They hunt other hunters as well. Can you imagine that? Something actually going on the hunt for people that are hunting it. In turn, this is a creature that is absolutely going to do that. So they do these in pairs. When they find someone, they actually start trying to do its main tactic, which is corner their prey. So this is where it becomes very dangerous. You do not want these two Onka boy to get you in a spot where it's one on the left, one on the right, and then nowhere for you to run behind you. They've cornered you and they pretty much got you at that point. So that's what they try to do. They try to outmaneuver you to get to that specific spot. Where you can actually do something else in terms of saving yourselves, it seems pretty simple, but at the same time, it could be a trap is this. If you are nearby a tree, a very tall tree, most 
prominently, then you can climb up it and you're safe, at least for now. This is because the Onka boys, those very large horns that I was mentioning earlier, apparently it comes with a drawback. While they can use those horns to either fight, I guess, other Onka boys or to use them to impale their prey and so on, they cannot use those horns to climb up trees, especially trees with lots of branches and other things that they would just get stuck it would hamper them in other words so there you are you can scamper up the tree as quick as a squirrel and you think you're safe but here's the problem these onka boys are very very patient in fact they've uh, come up with another maneuver as well the first maneuver was trying to corner you next maneuver is basically outweighting you and what i mean is this they will stay down there at the bottom in the ground waiting for you at the top of the tree until you tire out and this is what they do one of them will stay awake and the other one will go to sleep i mean they're the apex predators probably in their area so they don't have to worry about anybody else coming up across them but absolutely they will just wait and watch their prey until their prey can do no more until they've been up there for who knows how long days maybe you could be up there thinking that again that they're going to tire out nope they're just going to wait and sleep and then watch and then sleep and then take turns and then finally when you've gotten to the point where it's just you passing out that's where you fall over or maybe it's to a point where you're so hungry or so thirsty that you've pretty much got no choice you got to jump down that's when the uncle boys got you so isn't that really really scary it's almost really deadly too because these are creatures that are very patient the instant thing that that reminded me of is the wonderful movie tremors remember that prominent scene where a guy was like up there on some kind of i don't know if it was like a telephone pole electric pole something like that and people are wondering, what happened? What is he doing up there? Well, one of the tremors was waiting for him, right? That's what that reminded me of when it came to the Unka Boy. Very scary stuff. But otherwise, if you're not within their vicinity, then you should be safe. So let me know what you guys think. That's pretty much it. That's all the information associated with these creatures. Not much else in terms of other characteristics or other things that stand out um, they just happen to be hunters and if you fall within their category of, of their sight line then watch out but those of you in the brazil let me know as well on the local side what you guys and gals think all right everybody thanks again as always take care bye